So we have learned how to find the area under normal curve given either a value or a couple different values. We could shade the area and then find it using normal CDF. So it makes sense that we're going to want to invert that process and go backwards. So instead of being given two x values, find the area. What if you want to find the um, x value from the area? In other words, you're given the area and you're looking for the x values, the data values that would correspond to that. So when you do this, the only thing to keep in mind is that the function we're going to use in the calculator, which is inverse norm, always works from the left tail, always. So it always has the left tail area in there. Right here is where I wrote that up. So if you keep that in mind, you'll never go wrong. So let me draw a picture for you right here. So we have um, assume that x is normally distributed, x being your random variable, find the following. Include an appropriately shaded and labeled picture and your calculator entry and give three decimal places. So the mean is 75, the standard deviation is 8. Now I find the x value that cuts off the bottom 33% of the curve. So let me draw you a picture one second. All right, so I have this picture drawn here. And you can see that we're talking about the left part of the curve because it's the bottom 33%. So I shade that part over here and I label it as 33%, 0.33. And then I want to figure out what this x value is. And I can see that the computer thinks it's 71.48, but I obviously need to find that for myself. So how do you find it? The answer is you use the inverse norm function, which is in your calculator. And then it always takes the left area and then the mean and then the standard deviation. And that's always the form that these take. And that gets me thinking, I should probably make a comment like that back a couple pages for normal CDF, just so you have it written somewhere what the general form is. So the general form, here it is, general form is normal CDF and then left comma right comma mean comma standard deviation. So it's the left bound, um, left bound, right bound, mean comma standard deviation. Okay, that's always the general form for those. And the general form for inverse norm always is the left tail area always, no matter what, you can't avoid it. So the left tail area, let me put that right here, general form. Okay, so it's going to be inverse norm, left tail area, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation. Always, always, always it will follow that general form. Okay, so if that's our general form, then we are going to use inverse norm. Our left tail area is 0 0.33. By definition, it's the area in the left tail. Our mean is 75 and our standard deviation is 8. So now I'm going to grab the calculator, clear this out, and you find inverse norm in the same place you found normal CDF. It's right there. It's number three, inverse norm. So my area is 0.33. My mean was 75 and my standard deviation was 8. And I press enter and then I press enter. And it tells me that it believes it's 71.48, which is what it is. So this would be my x value. Oop, sorry, wrong place. So approximately... 71.48, it wanted three decimal places, so 481, 481. All right, and then this is an x value you're finding. It's not a probability. You were finding a probability earlier in the problems that use normal CDF. You were finding percentile rank or proportion or probability. Um, these were talking about proportions and probabilities right here. Right, so probability, probability, all of those are probabilities. Capital P stands for probability. Okay, And then in the next problem, it talked about proportions, it talked about probabilities, it talked about percentile rank. That's all normal CDF. Inverse norm is when you're looking for an x value. See that right there? You want to find an x value, you're going to need inverse norm. All right, so that seems simple enough. Let's see if we can keep doing it and apply it to some other problems. All right, so I have the verbal GRE score is normally distributed with a mean of 1066 and a standard deviation of 191. Well, we've seen that before. I want to find um, Columbia only wants to take the top 10%. What should their cutoff score be? So I'm looking for a score. See it right there? 
So if you're looking for a score, you're going to need inverse norm. So let me draw a picture first of what's going on, which even though I didn't write it in the instructions up here, you would need to write in um, as you're doing this on a test or something like that. There, I just added in those instructions right there about including appropriately shaded label. That way there's no confusion. And I even put it in, in the earlier question too, just to make sure it's clear. All right, so let me throw in this graph real quick. All right, there we have it right there. So we have a normal curve. We have 1066 in the middle. And then we have that area over in the right tail because it's Columbia. They only want the top 10%. And we can see that the computer thinks it's 1311, but we're going to have to prove it. So we're going to have to find inverse norm. And then we have to tell it the left tail area. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. We know that the right tail area is 0 0.10, what right tail area equals 0 0.10. This means that the left tail area of our score is 1 minus 0 0.10, which is 0 0.90. So that's what we're going to have to put in to the calculator. 0 0.90, 1066 is the mean, 191 is the standard deviation. So let's find what that is. So clear this. Second distribution, number three, 0 0.90, zero, clear, 0 0.9, 1066, 191. And then I'm going to press enter, enter. And that's 1310.78. So. there we have it. All right, now what about the 25th percentile? Well, if you score in the 25th percentile in this test, you're not doing so well. It means you're in the lower 25%. So let me draw you a picture of that. There we have the picture right there. So you can see this time we actually don't have to do any weird calculation. We know the left tail area because of the definition of a percentile. Percentile, if you remember, is the percent that is less than or equal to your score. So let me see, 25th percentile value means that 25% of the test takers score less than or equal to that value. Remember, we learned about that in section 3.4. So I know the left tail area is 0.25, so I'm going to take inverse norm, 0.25, 1066, 191. So second distribution, number three, inverse norm, and I'm going to take 0 0.25. And again, 1066 and 191 haven't changed. And that gives me 937.17. And there we have that. All right, now what about the middle 95%? What would that look like? And we're going to assume symmetrical middle. So let me draw that picture. All right, this is a little bit of a complicated picture. So let's take a look at it. We have the middle, which is evenly distributed, and it's 95% in that center. And then we have each of the two tails. Now, how did I figure this out? So if the middle is 95%, that means that middle, not middler, middle, middle is 95%. That means that the two tails together, together makes 100% minus 95%, which is 5%. Then I have each tail is 5% divided by 2, which would be 2.5%. 2.5%. Or that's 0 0.025 and that's where I got those numbers from that I have a little over here in the area and the area over here so you're in the left tail the area in the right tail they're both 0 0.025 those three numbers all add up to 100% now I need two scores I need the left hand score left hand X value that would be inverse norm and then if you look at the left-hand area, which is 691.6 is the score we're looking for, but that left-hand value, 
that tail is 0 0.025. It's just one of the tails. It's that little white tail. So I'm going to take the little white tail and I'm going to put that in as my left tail area. So I'm going to say 0 0.025, comma 1066, comma 191. And that should give me the value that's on the left. And it should be less than 1066. So let me try that. So second distribution, number three, 0 0.025 as opposed to 0.25, which is the one we did last time. And that's 691.65. All right, so there's that one. Now for the right-hand one, I've got to do a little bit more work here. So the right-hand one, the area to the left of it is all this gray region plus that white tail over there. So that would be 0.975 is my area because it's 95 and 0.025 put together. So this would be right. Okay. So this would be 0.975. And again, the 97 comes from 0.025 plus um, 0.95. So the gray region plus the white tail together. Let me show you. 0 0.95 plus 0 0.025 makes 0 0.975. So I want second inverse, number 3, 0 0.975, 1066, 191. Enter. And I get 1440.35. So 1440. 0.35. And this concept we were working on right here is actually very important. That's going to come back to haunt you in a big way in Chapter 9, where you have to find the middle, um, the scores that cut off the middle 95% or the middle 90%. So keep that one in mind because it'll come in handy later. All right, so now we've learned two different techniques. We've learned normal CDF and we've learned inverse norm, and they get used in different situations. So let me write down a couple things, and I'll be right back. All right, so I have a picture drawn here. So normal CDF we use when you are given your x values or multiple x's, so it could be 1x or 2x's, um, or z values. It could be given z values, and you're asked to find an area, asked to find a probability, a percentile rank, a proportion, a percent, any of those things. If you're asked to find a percent, you're using normal CDF. If you're asked to find a percentile rank, you're using normal CDF. If, however, you're given the area or the percents or the probabilities, proportions, whatever, but you're asked to find a percentile, not a percentile rank, but a percentile, an X value, a Z score, a score, a cutoff, any of those things, um, X, Z, all of those would mean that you are using inverse norm. Inverse norm is the one where you have the area given and you're looking for the vertical bar line. Normal CDF is where you have the vertical bar lines, but you don't have the area. They're opposites of each other. One might say inverses of each other. Okay, so don't forget normal CDF takes four numbers. The left tail or the left bound the right bound the mean and the standard deviation again you are given the vertical bar you are looking for this area how big this area is inverse norm you only put in three numbers the left tail probability always left tail probability the mean and the standard deviation you're given the area but you're looking for where that vertical bar hits where does it touch the x-axis 